Jamie Dempsey. This is my life. But not today. I've been on so far. Oh shit. After working on a water taxi and swinging sharp blades around in Brunei, I was headed back to East Malaysia, this time to the state of Sabah. There are two ways to get to Sabah, hit the road or sail the seas. Without a bike, the choice was made for me. Maritime routes are still hugely important here. The ferries move hundreds of workers and tourists every day and are pretty much the easiest way to cross the border. Two and a half hours later, I found myself deposited on Sabah's west coast. Before I continue my journey through Sabah, I'm making a quick stop in Kuala Penyu. One of my Facebook friends told me I had to check out Pulau Tika. So, Amoeba on Amoeba, if you're watching, this one's for you. Hello there! After a 30 minute boat ride, I'm finally here at this beautiful island. Just check this place out! Survivor Island! Some call Pulau Tiga Survivor Island because the first season of the hit reality series Survivor was actually filmed here. I guess now they'll have to call it Ride and Seek Island. Pulau Tiga is a forest reserve, so a lot of the island is left undisturbed. That makes it a great place to explore. I soon bump into some of the island's local residents. Monitor lizards are the island's apex predators. In other words, they eat everything and nothing eats them. <laughs> Whoa! There's like, I don't know, maybe 15? Their prey includes insects, crabs, snakes, turtles, crocodiles, and each other. I'm just gonna try and take a quick selfie here. <laughs> After exploring the island, I hung out with some park rangers. So what else is there to do here in Palatiga? Going to the Snake Island. Is it Snake Island? Yes. Is yes. an island full of snakes? We can see the snake and even hold the snake. You want to try it? You can take me? Yes, okay, sure. Okay, I'll go with you. Snake Island is a big rock, ringed by small rocks covering a bunch of deadly snakes. Okay, this is the place where the snake can be found. Snakes are here. <laughs> I was happy to take the ranger's word for it, but they just had to prove a point. So they leave me here, all alone, on top of these rocks where tons of snakes come to me. That's all I need. Snake orgy. <laughs> Thousands of sea snakes hunt in the sea while they nest and mate under rocks. Each snake has enough venom to kill 10 people in a single bite, but they're generally not aggressive unless you start agitating them. I can't believe I just did that, but that was really cool. 
Okay, I got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Back on the mainland, I was about to embark on a really crazy plan. I wanted to get to the wildest part of Sabah's wild interior, the Malayal Basin. Only 2,000 people have ever made it in. I wanted to be the 2,001st. But first, I needed a bike. So I picked up a Ducati Hyperstrada. Its engine is a monster. Its stability is well known. But could it defeat the treacherous slopes and gorges guarding the Malayal Basin? A defense that had kept it untouched, unseen and uncharted for millions of years? Well, I was about to find out. I was heading to the depths of Sabah in search of the mysterious Malayal Basin. But before I got too deep in, I decided to visit Sabah's famous agriculture park. I met Herbert, one of the park's researchers. So yeah. I see many plants and flowers here that I've never seen before. This yeah. place is a research center, but what kind of research do you do here? Yeah, uh, these are mainly doing a bee research, you know. And then a lot of uh, plants that we grow here is actually mainly for the bees to get their nectar and pollen. Oh, yeah. so all so of these flowers I see are here to attract right. the bees. Yes, right. Within the park is the Bee Research Center, home to four of the world's nine recorded species of bees. And Herbert, unfortunately, was kind enough to let me get close to them. Before that, you, you must put on your gear of the, you know, the vial so that you won't get stung. Okay. Okay, okay there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Feels very okay? formal. Yeah. Here you are, we are starting the smoke now. Oh no. So actually, we are smoking this one so that they won't smell the pheromone, the alert pheromones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they've been mixed up with the smoke. They won't smell my fear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I leave it up like that. Yeah, you, you can you can hold it, okay? Don't, don't drop, okay? Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. yeah. Then you, you can even take off your what you call your. No, oh. don't take it off. Don't take it off. No, it's okay. Oh, you're leaving me no, helpless. You, you are. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh my god. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. You can hold it. Yeah, this is very calm. No! Oh my god! Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yes, that's good. Yeah. First time ever touched me before, eh? I'm trying yeah, to remain good. calm. Okay. Think of my happy place far away from here. A little bit of Is there one on my face? Oh my god! They're crawling all over me! <laughs> Alright. Do you want to get stung? No, I don't want to get stung. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to get stung? Uh, actually, it's very good. It's kind of like um, therapy, you know, uh, bee venom therapy. People do that for yes, therapy? Yes, yes, Like they got arthritis or gout problems with the knees or something like that. They get a, lot, a few times, maybe uh, five stung to, in order to get rid of the gout or the arthritis problems. It might get swollen after maybe uh, about five minutes like that. Okay, okay, okay. right. Like here, okay? Yeah. Uh, Alright. So you can see that the thing is going to move down like that and see the venom, the pulse of that. Yes. Oh, you yeah. Okay. There's so many things I want to call you right now, B. Okay, we've got to get rid of it. Yeah. So make sure there is no, the thing is not inside that. You get more venom into your the tissue here, then it will swell more, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, brave enough. <laughs> I'm um, feeling brave, yeah. <laughs> After leaving the Bee Research Centre, I wasn't making as much progress as I wanted because I had a big fat bee sting on my hand. I just arrived in Kanengao and it looks like it's going to get dark in about an hour. Everything here is closed, so 
I don't think I'm going to make it to Malia Basin tonight. I'm going to find a place to rest up because tomorrow I think the journey is going to be a tough one. On the way to Malia, Keningau is the final frontier before the going starts getting tough. Wow, the scenery has completely changed. The air up here is much cooler. Perfect riding temperature. The other thing I come across, some uneven roads. And this is where this bike comes really in handy. Woo! No problem. But then, I got to within 50 kilometers of the Malia Basin, and the real challenge started. Well, these are definitely the worst roads I've been on so far. I was deep in Sabah's interior on my quest to find the Malayal Basin, a lost world that had never been touched by humans. Well, these are definitely the worst roads I've been on so far. Oh shit. broken a little bit, but hopefully we can get it back on. My shifter here, it's pretty bent. I see the grip came off of it. Not sure if that's gonna work, so I'll have to test that out. All right, well, it looks, looks like the pannier is not gonna be going back on on its own. It's completely broken, so I'm working this bungee cord. Just gonna rig it for the rest of the journey, so at least I have something to keep my stuff in. Got about 29 kilometers left on these roads. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna do my best. Let's see what happens. If I could just make it to the research center on the edge of the basin, I'd be able to find shelter for the night. It's starting to rain now. I'm hoping I get there before it really starts to come down. for me. Oh my god. 
I get it. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that was seriously the craziest, most gnarly ride I've ever taken in my life. I was quite scared a few times. The first time I went down was definitely not my last. I made it here in one piece, but obviously my bike, poor thing, did not. My mirrors came off. My handguard turn signal came off. I lost the rear turn signal. And most importantly, over here, my shifter. I'm stuck in first gear. Yesterday's ride was really, 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 really tough. The hardest I've ever done. And to be honest, last night I was kind of down. Um, I didn't know if I could do it. <laughs> but waking up to this this morning, I mean, it just makes it totally worthwhile. And I feel amazing. Technically, I wasn't actually in the basin. It would take five days to get there, and I didn't have that kind of time. The basin is roughly the size of Singapore. It's surrounded by steep cliffs and it's insurmountable by foot in all directions. There's only one way in and that's through the river. That's why half the basin still lies unexplored. But even just the basin's edge is filled with the bizarre. One of the researchers from the research center decided to take me on a trek into the alien environment. Thanks to its remote location, the area is filled with rare and unidentified life forms. And researchers spend their lives here studying them. Oh my god! Ah! What is that disgusting looking slug like thing? It's a tiger leech. A leech? Yeah, a leech. So if I breathe on it? Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. He knows where I am. Oh, it's so disgusting. All right, I'm going to walk behind you and you tell me if you see any more of these guys. As we got deeper, the creepy crawlies just kept getting creepier. It's a very dangerous it's a poison. Oh, what happens if you get bitten by one of these? Can you die? Yeah, I die. <laughs> okay, so you okay. keep these for research. Yeah. Snakes are one thing, but these spiders? That's an entirely different story. Specimens are brought to the research lab, which is filled with the wild, the wonderful, and the just plain weird. That is the biggest frog. I have ever seen. It's like a frog on steroids. After sedating the mysterious spider with alcohol, we took a closer look. Oh, wow! Look at his back. It almost looks like a shell, like a sand dollar. Oh, he's still moving a little bit. Um, but there's lots of little holes in his backside shell. I hadn't even scratched the surface of the outskirts of Malia Basin and already I was face to face with the incredible. I wanted to stay longer but I just couldn't get my mind off my bike. So I've gotten the bike cleaned up and I've tried to fix it but even with the spare parts that I have, it can't be done because the shifter link has totally snapped off. So I'm catching a ride with these guys. We're going to go to the next major town and hopefully I can fix it there. The next major town turned out to be six hours away, the coastal town of Sampurna. Well, it was no small feat, but I finally got the bike here. It was a really long journey, 
and it's pretty late, so everything here is closed. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get the bike <laughs> fixed here tomorrow, to be honest, but I'm exhausted, and all I need right now is a good night's sleep. The next morning, I was on a mission to find myself a bike shop. It wasn't easy. Sampurna is a small town of just 130,000 people, but luck was on my side. So I rode this bike into Maoyao. I barely made it in, and I knew the roads were going to be gravel, you know, off-road conditions, and I went down a couple of times. But the major thing I'm concerned about is down here. The shifter link right oh. here is completely snapped off. So I'm stuck in first gear now. Is that something you can fix, please? <laughs> okay, I, I can do it, but I will take time for a few hours. A few hours. Okay, well, I'll walk around town and then I'll come back in a few hours okay. and see what you have to say. Okay. Sampona's waters are part of the coral triangle. The marine life here is diverse and the town's economy is dominated by marine products. inside of there and I don't think that's something I want to do because this thing feels like it's pretty strong. Oh wow that's a big one. Very big. Oh it's like jelly. Really slimy. <laughs> It was time to check on my bike. All right, Pete, give me some good news. Can you fix it? Okay, I can repair this motorcycle, but we don't have part. You sure? Nothing in the whole island, no, like anywhere. No, because is a very, very small place. Uh, we don't have supplier or dealer here. We must order. If I can get you one of these, you can fix it. Yes, sure. All right, all right, let me see what I can do. I'm going to make a few phone calls, and hopefully I can get one of these to give to you, and we'll be on our way. Okay. This is Ducati Malaysia? Great, hi, yeah, this is Jamie Dempsey. I've run into a bit of a problem. Actually, kind of a big problem. 